So this particular panel is one that is going to be looking particularly at the differences in cultures, in different values, in different belief systems um, from the various regions that are represented here. We have the Balkans, we have the Mediterranean, and we have um, the Swana region, the Southwest Asia, North Africa region represented here. And we are working on projects that basically cross over those boundaries and yesterday we were talking about the theme of inequality and what that means for cross-border kind of relations. Today we were looking particularly at the theme of cultural differences, cultural values, how these differ and how we need to take these into account when formulating projects that cross boundaries and traveling these, bound, uh, traveling these projects um, across these different boundaries as well. So you all know Alada and Biljana, they're mentors and have been with us from the start. Mariola and um, Alina are with us for this particular panel, so thank you very much for being here. So each of them will have um, seven minutes to speak to this, and then we'll have a facilitated conversation um, be between us, but also obviously inviting you folk to ask any questions around these things. I'm just wondering, Alina, since we may start with you. Uh, okay. How do you feel about it? No, you, you happy to? Yeah. yeah, there's a microphone over there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, I'm so happy to be here, uh, a lot of friends and familiar faces um, and a lot of people I would love to meet but I'm not part of the program so I'll jump into, like I had prepared something else totally different than uh, the conversation of the, <laughs> of the panel um, but it's um, this game and the, the initial thoughts have brought a few thinking, uh, some thinking um, that I will throw a few ideas and then say again what I wanted to say <laughs> and then uh, move on. The, there is something that, um, I, I come from academia, I come from academic research and uh, while working in the social uh, sciences, it was clear for us that a lot of the researchers carry moral underpinnings while doing the work that uh, do not necessarily, while doing the work, comes to the surface or researchers are not uh, aware of. It's somewhere in their upbringing, it's in their culture, it's, in their, it's a value system that they haven't reflected on or in their psychology as well. And uh, usually when uh, people from, when the majority are from Europe, let's say, researchers, uh, many things are not said or not clear or taken like as for granted. But when people from the Mediterranean or from the Arab region join the circle, then the moral underpinnings of the uh, southern Mediterranean or the Arabs starts to being questioned or starts to being asking questions about the value system. In another way, a lot of the value system we carry remains uh, unrecognized until an other comes to the circle. And when this other joins, um, depending who the other is and how othered is the other, <laughs> then uh, the, the, the conversation around the moral underpinnings becomes more um, either, uh, it's rarely smooth, many times it gets more, um, how to say, emotional, like it, it moves something in the guts uh, and makes people uncomfortable because it touches uh, um, certain beliefs or certain uh, interests or certain worldviews or certain um, ideas of the self. Now, we will not go into uh, like how the Orient is viewed from Europe. I think all of you know something about Orientalism. Um, but maybe um, what would be interesting to think about in, in the sense how to move as cultural actors and uh, people who organize festivals and like the the smartest people in the globe, <laughs> uh, to move from the idea of like corporate uh, approach to cultural, uh, how do you, what do they call it in corporations? Like, you know, when before businessmen want to go to the Gulf, they give them this uh, course on like how to say hello to the Gulf people, so you make business. 
this it has a name. Uh, no, no, like cultural. Huh? No, like it's like it's a what? Something like this, like a basic cultural training, so you so you know like. This other person, you uh, the, <laughs> so you don't like. What do you do when they sit to eat? How do you say hello? What, how do you etc. These things. So surely we we're not there. Like we're not in a corporate setting where we want to kind of say, okay, when you come to the Arab world, uh, remember some people don't drink alcohol. Some people, you know, uh, I don't know what. Like it's not like this. Uh, so the question is. A question of power. It's when we were conversing around values, what was clear in the in the different perspectives is the question of power. The question when we come to do work across borders or with other cultures is how do we um, engage with our own power uh, and with the power of the other? How to make sure that there's a space for the other person and we don't use our power, uh, whoever we are, whether we're a funder, in the case of Maurid, we're funders, so we have power because we have money. So when we go to Tangier to organize a festival in, in, a, in a city in the Arab region, how do we approach the city and the, or, and the partners who have local organizations in Tangier with an knowledge and awareness and humility and understanding that it's not just our vision that we're bringing because we know it, because we have been doing festivals since 20 years, because we have the money, or the connections, or we've seen many festivals around the world. So, and this is not easy, because each cultural actor or each organization has a perspective, and they usually have an idea, they have a vision, they have a mission, and they believe that they're right, they believe that they're doing something meaningful, and they, they like what they're doing, and most of us are very passionate about what we're doing, and we, um, do it with all our hearts, or else we, will, we wouldn't be here. So the question is, when we approach, um, if this is the question of the panel, like when we want to do work with other people, not with ourselves, uh, how to all the time take into consideration the different uh, power divides or the power uh, Im imbalance and relations? And this then is not... Also, how to make it not uh, folklorize it, like how to not to caricaturize it, because then it becomes uh, then uh, okay, hi, oh you uh, okay, like whatever you want. So it's not like the other, it's like not thinking oh the other person or the other partner or is uh, in, because we respect them, then it becomes like everything they want is, is, is okay and, and they, ha they know it all because they're from that village or from that town or from that city. So there's a, uh, there's a negotiation or there's a sharing or a, a synergy, uh, not synergy, um, uh, um, dialectic, some kind of dialectics that need to take place and then something will emerge. And what will emerge will be some kind of uh, a shared vision uh, of, of multiple perspectives and some these sometimes these multiple perspectives are different culture perspectives different value perspectives or different artistic and aesthetic aesthetical perspectives so they don't need all of us to share the same ideas of what good art is or how we want to engage communities etc uh, i think my time is over uh, but right I maybe just to share one thing that when we say these ideas and reflections, it's not like all or none because we never do it right all the time. So when we went to when we were thinking of uh, organizing this festival in Tangier, uh, we built partnerships with three organizations in Tangier: uh, Cinémathèque de Tangier, Daba Théâtre, and uh, Think Tangier. These Think Tangier are specialized in urban studies and one in theater and one in cinema. So it was a cross-disciplinary festival. Uh, but what happened is that because we didn't, there was not enough time and resources to, because that would happen to all of us, to spend enough time with every partner and with all partners together, the program was, uh, Parts of the program were built with one partner, part of the program built with another, par uh, with another partner, and then with a third partner. 
And when we came and implemented it, and the, the lessons learned afterwards is that how much time and resources we need to plan to build something all of us together, not the cinema alone, the theater alone, and the uh, urban uh, engagement type uh, the research alone. And uh, yeah, that would take us to the question of resources and time and uh, personnel, how many people can we, how much time can we have to plan the festival? Can, do we have six to eight months? Do we have enough travel tickets to go to that place and spend time with the people we're organizing the festival with? I think we'll have time to converse as well. Thank you. Since you're coming from the same region as Beirut in particular, would you like to go next? Okay. <laughs> 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 no, I, you want to say something? No? Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Hello, first. Uh, I, f I feel it's unfair because I don't know who is there <laughs> yet. I met some of you, but uh, I, I hope to know more about each one of you later. So what I can share is mostly from our experience as a collective. So it's really from the ground and from trying to do this work in this country. And you might know it more and more that this country has so many borders, internal borders, mental borders, fractions, fragmentations, uh, divisions, uh, that how can we do this uh, cultural and artistic long-term process in the middle of all this landscape? Um, so from the beginning, it was a big question, how can we do something that is meaningful that can potentially be um, activating something in this huge mess. So for us, we started from the beginning to involve ourselves and to dig into the different realities of the country. So to go and meet the different faces and the different contexts around the country. And you might not had the occasion yet to go outside from Beirut, but from one region to another, there is so much different realities. You enter different worlds, where in that region, it's not well seen to have a woman singing. In that other one, you can have a, a queer dancer performing in the streets. So we have so many different um, cultural backgrounds and reference. So how can we build a discourse that can be addressed to all of these people at the same time. What a mission that we gave to us. I don't know if it was a good choice, but we it's I think it's the only place where it's meaningful to to be an artist in that country. So to continue, um, I need to say that even from one generation to another, we don't have the same experiences, we don't have the same uh, um, experience of the country. From my b bigger brothers, they don't have the same relation to the, the country, to the history, to the communities, to all the system of values that are framing our mind. So imagine there's also different layers adding on the top of the identities that we all have, the different identities that we have to carry. And on the top of this, we also have the political <laughs> uh, belongings or identities that is also creating more blurriness in the society. Should we follow this or this, but we are part of this community, of this sect, of this. Um, so, um, for us, we really need to escape from the fact of doing something only for a circle of convinced people from the same value. And uh, at the moment of the revolution, for example, all the cultural organization here in Lebanon put a statement to be on strike. And uh, we did the same, like just, oh, we, we are a cultural organization, we, did, we have to do the same. And then we, 
we find it uh, a nonsense to stop working at that moment. And we gathered the community around us to ask them, what do you think we should do? We want to support the revolution. We want to be on the street. Should we organize performances and concerts and stuff like this during the revolution? And people said, yes, indeed. And it made sense because our job is not to preach the convinced people but to keep spreading poetry and dance and abstraction and beautiful things to people that need to be a bit shaken and to, that need to be, to be still contaminated artistically, let's say, in order to one day hopefully change a little bit the values or maybe to uh, bring these people to connect to common values. Um, So I, I can say many stories, but <laughs> maybe it's uh, um, the thing is that we have to think all of this by ourselves. There is no cultural policies. There is no um, a head institution that is giving tools or advices or directions. It's something that we have to build up with people and that we need to care about what to present, what to invite, uh, how to do it in a way that uh, could be acceptable for everyone. And we have a national sport here that is like to labelize people and to put stickers on you are Christian, you are a Durzi, you are a refugee, you are a marginalized community, you are a domestic worker. And in, through the festival for us, it's a space where we really tend to, to erase these labels and create the encounter with the excuse of the art. And at the moment, the singer that will move everyone is Palestinian, but she's not announced as the Palestinian refugee singer. She's just a beautiful woman singing with a beautiful voice. And then we noticed that the most uh, radical Christians uh, were moved and uh, uh, completely seduced and asked us again to program her. So there is hope to, to break a little bit these boundaries that they exist in our society, but uh, it, it's a constant care to many, many, many dimensions that we can speak more about. Thank you. So um, I'm going to try to be brief, kind of go back a little bit to the title of this. So culture, values, and history. Um, I think I want to stand mostly on this idea of values. And just to reflect a little bit on the practice, both of the festival that I've run, the Buffer Fringe Festival, but also a little bit in my kind of overall kind of, I don't know, like political philosophical direction of what it is to create, to, to make space for artists to present on the island of Cyprus. So um, so one thing that I, I think that we, we venture into producing culture or facilitating culture many times, um, and we venture into spaces without uh, really having an understanding of who's there. So this idea of um, kind of a cultural community mapping um, is a very basic is a very basic principle, I, I think, in the work that we should do in our multicultural, multilingual, um, like multi-sectoral uh, societies. And also to think that these things change. So the, the mapping that we will do today, it's not the same one that we will do in three to five years. We need to um, kind of be true to how um, the the um, development of social political um, 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 yeah things that happen in our area affect our smaller communities. So I think it's important to always kind of see where we are at, at a specific time. So there's different ways to do this, and I think, I think you know kind of the social sciences do give us a lot of food of how to do this, how to really dive into and engage with the communities that we're part of. Um, and I think that this will take us to this idea of integrity that we were talking about yesterday. So how is it that we can create a space for artistic expression from, from and just kind of have a, the central idea of how integrity 
um, in our interaction needs to be there always. So if we know who's there and if we validate as many presences as we can, then we kind of go closer to inclusive models. Um, and the, this, the idea of inclusivity, a lot of times is also kind of mixed up with uh, kind of interculturalism, we we're talking about it before. Uh, these are different things. Being inclusive is not necessarily being intercultural. Um, it could mean many different things. It has very different nuances, and I think we also need to be true to the nuances of our own communities both of the people that are there, but also with the exchanges that we can have for, that, for there to be an honesty. And that's where also our relationship with people like our funders uh, and with international artists comes, comes in. So again, this uh, paying attention to, so uh, of paying attention to processes of getting to know both your funders, but also the artists that you would host is super important. Otherwise, you're not kind of an equal ground and you're not doing justice to what they bring in, but also to what you are able to give them. And I'd just like to finish with two other kind of key elements to what it is that we are doing. Um, so the Buffer French Festival I <laughs> hopes that it's running on a decolonizing agenda. So what that means for us is to open up um, this conversation about so what are the narratives, what are the stories that have been told about us, either from people outside or from us? So many times being um, run, uh, exploited, um, and, and generally managed by um, individuals from you know, outside the island has kind of made us be very, um, go through process of self, uh, processes of self-editing. We shouldn't be doing that, we shouldn't be saying that. We can't host this person, we can't give them space, their work is too edgy, their work is boring. But you know, a lot of these processes need to kind of come, come through a process of dialogue rather than a process of, of having our own issues, right? Uh, the, the colonial voice inside our head say, you shouldn't be doing that, you should be doing that. So what I'm debating for, I guess, um, is that the more discussion that is had between ourselves as people that make space for artists to present their work and the artists and our funders and our supporters and the spaces who host us, the more talk there is and the more solidarity we, we build among us, the less colonized we will be either by ourselves or by them, right? Um, and yeah. I'm not going to talk about conflict and post-conflict. That's a huge discussion, and um, that also comes in many layers. But it's also it's an it's a it's an element that many of us struggle with, um, both social conflicts and political conflicts. For another conversation, thanks. Okay, um, so most of the things have been already said uh, and can be applicable to the region in which I live, work, and let's say, um, am more present. Um, but I would like to talk about this, this region or this Balkan or ex-Yugoslavia, mostly Balkan. And yesterday I mentioned in one sentence uh, and I mentioned uh, and I referred to Maria Todorova's book which is kind of a continuation of sides of Orientalism and also to see the Balkan as the other, the other of Europe. And it's always sees as this place, the barbarian space, uh, where all these turmoils are happening. So, but it's not only seen as the other from the other perspective, but there are many others within the Balkan region among ourselves. And actually, I would like to point out this, this otherness between ourselves and these polarities that are existing and mostly are based on what have been said, uh, different kind of values. And uh, they come from, um, from history or from how we have been uh, developed uh, within the communities, how the region history has been communicated between itself, between the world, uh, with the world, and um, with, the, I don't know, the neighbors also. So what I wanted to uh, say actually, it's um, 
connection with this uh, otherness. It's uh, how not only how you communicate with someone that see you as the other or comes and you work together, but how also within these powerful relations of the other communities within the Balkan, you communicate between yourself. So probably it's this what you already said, but I think it's also about thinking of this distribution of power and what that means. When you have a power, how you really communicate to distribute and what that means. If you are a Macedonian nationality living in a country with 80% of Macedonians and 20% of Albanians, you have to understand do, that you have a power and find a way how to distribute this power. So how you deal with these polarities which are, uh, uh, which are happening, it's something that I think it's a must for the cultural world to open up and to find the mechanisms, not only how to communicate them, but how to produce them. Before we were talking that some of these solutions are bottom up because most of the solutions who are coming from the top to the bottom, those are not the solutions that societies and us living in our disparities and differences are looking for. So what that means is that, for example, we in Macedonia, we have this multicultural system that it's, or not a system, but a model mostly, that it's functioning somewhere else, but it maybe is not functioning in this region or in this particular country. For example, that from, I mean also in the theory, but elsewhere we can see that there are many failings of these multicultural uh, models because it's, uh, it's consisted of borders. And actually I think now it's the time to overcome these borders and borders in institutions, borders among you know these values, we have different institutions, so there is no pos possibility to negotiate, to communicate, or to distribute the power. So what that means when you are separate and when you don't know each other, then this isolation and these um, unintegrative processes are coming out. So what I wanted to also to say about this, this this, I don't know, differences uh, on the values, it's also on many different levels. It's not only on the uh, religion. We have a different religions living in the region of Balkans, no matter as the Balkan was firstly related to this Romania, Rum, Ruma, Ruma countries, which were uh, Christians, let's say. But then we have a lot of uh, Muslims living there, we had uh, Jewish, uh, but with the Second World War, they were expelled from the countries. But you, uh, we have Catholics, Orthodox, uh, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is one of the, let's say, these uh, uh, differences. But also, this is very much populated, can, uh, I don't know, region with the different ethnicities. So what I said about uh, Macedonia, this uh, multicultural model actually is something that it's making these borders and non-communication. But also we have on a different levels with LGBT communities, with, uh, I don't know, with, uh, as I said, religions, with the ethnical backgrounds and et cetera, et cetera. So there are those, um, how to say, different challenges that are coming with us. And um, as I agree totally, it, they, it comes with the generations. So the generations of my grandfathers and then my parents and also with the older generations, it started changing. But I think uh, in the case of uh, all these countries, this independent cultural sector really made this effort to distribute the power or to find and think about models how we can communicate among each other with the communities in a way how to actually raise the questions probably. But not only those questions to be raised, but to provoke this critical thinking that would open up uh, possibility to reflect together. So this is this dialogue, how we do it. And I agree, we don't label things as such. We just try to say that this is also by the constitution in our countries is allowed that within the arts, you have the freedom to say everything and you won't be censored. 
So to try to use this possibility actually how to continue to reflect and to open up questions when they cannot be maybe open up in the other political arenas. Um, yes, maybe I will uh, stop here, but also I would like to maybe put an accent on how we change this right-wing regime in North Macedonia. It mostly it started with the cultural actions. But what is most important, and that's why I would say, again, this has to be kind of related among each, each other in the sector. And uh, then with the dialogue, we started talking with the other civil society, with the other people, with the students, and then the students or the next generation come up to, to build up this, what we called colorful revolution, and take down the right-wing government. So I think there is this uh, hope to distribute the power, but we have to think all the time about how we can do it, not only in a civil sector, but also thinking about even non-existing institutions, how to build the institutions with the different models of thinking, or how to, I don't know, reshape the institutions which can address or embrace, let's say, all these diversities that we are living with and living in. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much to the panel for that, uh, for your initial inputs. Are there questions or comments coming from the floor in relation to, to any of um, that, that anybody might have said? Um, I'll kind of maybe initiate some of the dialogue amongst us and, and invite you to just indicate when you have something to say. Um, Aurelio, uh, you spoke about about um, you know your your coming to to express common values, and you painted a, a picture of quite a complex society that um, you know had had a range of different values, a range of different. So, so I just wanted to know how do you arrive at common values, um, and and could you give us examples of what you found as being common values within this complexity that you painted? I'm not sure I will have um, a recipe or a, <laughs> um, a specific uh, thing to, to, to express because I can tell a little story that tells us a bit more about the mis how, how mysterious it is, in fact, this process. In 2017, we were working uh, on the edition of the festival and uh, at that moment, there were still a lot of uh, Syrian technicians, choreographer, artists in Lebanon. And so they were part of the team with everyone. And uh, one of our Syrian friends brought his mother to attend the festival. And she attended three nights of experimental music, classical uh, music, uh, theater, puppetry, storytelling, uh, contemporary dance, very abstract and very diverse performances. And this woman is um, uh, coming from a Bedouin uh, society. I don't know how to say it in English. Bed Bedouin is good, understand? And the last night she came to us to thank us for the beautiful moment she, she, she experienced, telling that she felt as she was home in the desert, spending the night singing and looking at the stars. So how come these contemporary art performances made this person feel at home in a country of exile, in a country where she experienced a lot of racism, and still, these moments of performances brought her back to something that we have in common, somehow. So, for us, it's still a mystery, but I believe it's very much related to the fact that we, as human beings, we are involved in that process. We are building relation, human relation, built on dialogue, on uh, listening to each other, trust, and the fact that we are not like uh, um, above or outside of the process, but together 
with everyone in the process makes this, this trustful relation possible and people can relate to what we believe in and join, in fact. Maybe for the moment of the festival, I don't believe that the week after people would have totally changed, but it's in our mission just to give the signs from one time to another that there is a possibility to think differently, to feel differently, and to 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 look at our differences different in another way, in a way that it's enriching rather than being uh, a border, let's say. Do you have a story about how you and your colleagues might have changed through these processes in dialogue with the other? <laughs> um. <laughs> or do you want to think about it and we'll come back? Mm, so yeah. It just be a bit of a rush to think about something like that now. Yeah, yeah, because it's, you're asking the story of my life. <laughs> so I will find some relevant examples. <laughs> yeah, but if you can think about something, because I think, you know, and I, and I wanted to maybe go into Alina and Elida to, to ask a similar question that flows from this one. Because I think you've, you've all been making a case, a very strong case for the need to be in dialogue with the people with whom we are engaging, as opposed to coming with, uh, you know, this is how it works and this is what you should believe and it's about understanding power and how it works. And so giving power, not giving, but you know, allowing power to be better distributed. What if, though, you are in situations where, let's use a, a practical example, which we spoke about yesterday. You go to a society, you go to a community where patriarchy might be a big thing. And so the people with whom you're engaging, even the women, who are maybe subject to patriarchy as a culture, you know, believe in it and think it's important and so on. And you uh, might have a different set of values, a different set of ideas. How do you engage with that in terms of the concept of distributing power? How do you, how do you practically go about doing that? Helena and then Alida? Would you like to answer? No, no. Yeah. Let, uh, <laughs> nice question, <laughs> let me say. Um, maybe I will think about it uh, from the perspective of an organizational building, uh, the, what we, you were discussing, which I think is very important, rather than with the community itself. Um, because we have, we have less of it uh, as an experience with the community. Although I think uh, this kind of... Um, Maybe media arts would have a lot to share about this. I'm glad, for example, uh, in the case of uh, Jordan, for example, where you work. But um, so, for example, let's say us, an organization that we've been established for 20 years. Uh, we are run, uh, there are members, uh, 38 members or 34 members, now 38. They elect a board, a board elects a uh, uh, a director, the director serves the, the, it's a hierarchical structure, like I don't know if most of you uh, function in this kind of structure. The question is when, uh, let's me put it in generational uh, setting, context, like my generation who, uh, who are the daughters and children of the 70s generation, who kept power for a very long time. <laughs> and uh, uh, we uh, had our own experiences, and then we've got the younger generation, the revolution, the generation of the revolution, the ones who were 20s in the 2011. So this generation, who was a bit different than us. And then we had to come uh, to start a, a kind of carrying responsibility of power at a time where that generation was still there, holding power, trying to keep it as much as possible. And then there were the 20s, 30s who were wanting to destroy everything. They didn't trust anything. They thought everything is like crap. So we had to kind of sit in the middle, build a new institution or a new model of governance, of, of sharing uh, power of thinking of, of uh, hierarchy, uh, but at the same time doing it as we go. We didn't have a blueprint. We had to trial and error. We had to do it ourselves. And we had to 
deal with patriarchy in a different way than the uh, leadership be before us. Because the leadership before us, especially feminist leadership, had to be in a kind of, um, like kind of imitate pat patriarchy to exist within it. We had the chance to create a different type of, of, of leadership that is not, some people call it feminist leadership, I will not go into labeling, but, uh, but it's different than being like a man, sorry man, <laughs> but being like a patriarch, let's say not a man, being like a patriarch and trying to you know, push things in a kind of a violent way, but no, trying to push things in a more like a flowy way, like a river, like a wind, like more dealing with the questions of the environment, with the end of the world, with our climate change, with the, all the challenges that we're all living now, we as institutions or we as people organizing things had to kind of think of these things at the same time because it was no longer the status quo that we've inherited was shaking. We did not stand on a, on a ground anymore. So the, the, the patriarchy that we inherited or we work still within is also not the same patriarchy. Uh, and there is, sometimes it's worse because, I mean, there, there is the research that, uh, that tells us, I mean, the patriarchy of this century is much, much worse than the patriarchy that of the beginning, uh, the beginning of the last century. Um, and sometimes it's more violent, but at the same time, we are confronting it or we are trying to uh, deal with it in a different way, given also that we had uh, more space to experiment. So our kind of, our, uh, I don't know if it applies to everybody, uh, maybe it's not the same in certain contexts. So in our, in our context here, we have the space to explore something new, to build something different. But at the same time, it's not totally in, uh, preserved. Like it is, it, it needs to be uh, protected. And the question is how this model that is still new, that we're still experimenting with, can travel and can have um, uh, different, let's say, lives. Like, or like, how can we learn from each other experiences? How can we? Uh, think of festivals in a way where it's more feminist, more environmental, uh, more, um, uh, more yes, like really undoing patriarchy in, in one way or another. Okay, I'm gonna try to, to take your question maybe one step further. So uh, a lot of us come from, I mean, this is from the conversations we've been having the last couple of days. So with many of you, what I've realized that there, there are conditions in, in communities whereby there is minimal link with decision-making powers, with decision-makers, with funders. Um, there's also censorship in, in different ways. Um, and there's not real kind of communication um, with those that could actually make space. So this is also a conversation that we've been having about the top-down and bottom-up approaches. Um, and these are, these are tensions, right? So do you try to go to the establishment and bug them until they change the policy or they make a policy, whatever? Or do you create, try to enforce what is happening on the ground through civil society to be able to, to, to bring change? I don't really have a response to that. <laughs> Um, I see value in both, um, and I think it's very community specific. Um, and uh, my my plan C to this is it, basically two suggestions. So one is to ut to utilize higher education, because I partly come from higher education. There are possibilities in many places for collaborations between. Um, universities and there are exchange programs and there are possibilities for um, for kind of joint programs for training programs for for these types of for these types of things that might offer the possibility for art to be developed and to be presented and to be funded so that's the one thing and the second thing is to create stable collaborations 
um, with organizations abroad. And part of me hurts when I say this, because it shouldn't be like that. But there can be partners outside our communities and outside our countries that will stand in solidarity with what, what it is that we do. So I, I think that part of change, a part of movement, can actually, brought, can actually be brought in through um, other um, through, through other avenues. Um, it's a lot of pressure on the art sector to say, yes, you know, we need to mobilize. We definitely need to fight the patriarchy. We need to kind of change the system. It's a lot of pressure. So what I'm saying is, I think that we should open up ourselves to maybe playing in different fields. Um, play within the communities, play with our, try to see what we can do with our administrations. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Uh, it's often inglorious. Um, and to think in different ways and to custom make as much as possible. Yeah, I think you, you raise an interesting point and certainly the continent that I come from, we don't, we don't take an either or approach just because our experience is that our governments are never gonna to come to the party really, but that doesn't stop us from continuing to engage with them, you know, because it's our democratic right to kind of do so. But at the same time, we kind of build, almost we run a parallel thing. We, we work with civil society to make sure that things are happening there and finding ways of supporting civil society, but at the same time, organizing civil society to lobby government. So, you know, you're kind of doing these things kind of, Simultaneously, we don't have the luxuries that liberal democracies kind of have in a way where those kinds of things are a little bit more kind of respected. Um, are, there, are there any questions coming from the floor yet before Bill Hiana moves on? Yes, Christina, you are nodding? Okay, you're waiting for the question too. Do you want to say something? I just wanted to maybe uh, take a different a different question <laughs> to you, uh, Bolyana, because you spoke about, um, you know, on the one hand, uh, so, so the Balkans were going to see Western Europe, Western Europe sees Balkans as the other, but within the Balkans itself, there are so many kind of differences. And I know also from within the African experience, it's like, you know, we kind of get together as Africa and we kind of like, you know, have this attitude of we are Africans versus the world. But we also have all these fights amongst ourselves, but we try not to have those fights publicly <laughs> because that's not supposed to be how it is because we're all Africans and we're all in this together kind of thing, you know? And it's a, it's a bit of a, of a silly thing, really. But, but it's, 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 I just wondered about the extent to which one deals with these complexities on the one hand because of a history of colonialism and how we are kind of seen in contemporary terms. So you kind of have this sense of unity against the other but you, it also then compromises the way in which you are able to engage with each other um, around the differences that you might have. Is it a question or a statement? I'm asking, is that true of your experience or, or not? I said we are not unified. The only unity which was existing was this Yugoslavian Federation. And, uh, but there are many unions, if you're asking about that, uh, on a different level. I was talking yesterday about associations and um, I don't know how we try to find our common denominator or to build a position from where we can negotiate. But I don't know, I just wanted to say something that um, uh, has been said before that I think maybe this method of unlearning and undoing is something that it's good to think about and to start thinking all over about things which are happening because as you said um, we are different communities that we try to find a common denominator maybe this is not put, put, uh, needed to be found but the process of our I don't know dialogue is important how we grow together in these differences. So if we unlearn, and I do, undo, <laughs> and uh, you know, then maybe we can create these new systems of uh, feminist or care or being together of collectives and etc. And when you were talking about this patriarchy, I just wanted patriarchy. I wanted to say we talked with Christina, probably also she will talk about that, so I will not talk about it, trying to find a way how 
uh, you know, to understand the different contexts of this patriarchy. So, for example, in our country, you still have my father's or a bit younger generation that have these jokes about uh, blonde women or this and that. And it's very chauvinistic, you know. But the thing is, and then, you know, it's like, oh my God, if you see it from this. But, you know, either you dismantle this, either you say, okay, this has been done in a different context, has been in a different way communicated, it was a different circumstances. And it's either I say, hey, come on, you are doing this, this is total. <laughs> or I'll try to say, listen, this is not something that probably you should say it and how we negotiate it, listen to this and these kind of jokes. We have it now and stuff like that. So I think it's about this, um, how that uh, these two positions should kind of coincide or meet or try to find the way how to understand. So for example, my mother, when, because I don't believe in this, um, I don't know, um, polarities that are based on just a symbolic, uh, I don't know, uh, um, divisions, you know. Okay, she or he is a Muslim, or she or he is a Christian, and etc. So, for example, uh, my mother was sick, and she was in a hospital with a woman, a Muslim woman, with a whale, and her daughter, and also I was there. We're totally different, if you can see, with on a cult cultural basis. But then, and my mother died eight years ago, and still I am in a contact with, with this woman. And she really posts the most likes on my Facebook, you know. And mine are, you know, but it's not that she doesn't understand. She understands everything and really supports. And she calls me, and we talk about this and everything. And it's just our communities are totally differently living in a different societies. So from this, I'm trying to learn actually that I can learn, you know, and it's that she's, Minire is the most supportive. She's calling me to ask, what do you think? Because what happened is that I was doing an exhibition which was called the Ecstatic Bodies, uh, queer performance in Macedonian from 60s to 80s. So in the institution of contemporary art, there was an only one naked body, you know from which uh, people I was the most attacked, from those which are promoting vegan food, raw food, nice living and self-care, you know. And Minire called me and she said, don't worry, because I was attacked that my daughter is going to be taken from me, because, you know, she is the one uh, that I expose to naked bodies. And I said, but okay, okay, she goes to a beach and she sees the naked bodies. It's semi-naked, of course, you know. But anyhow, what I'm trying to bring here, it's about the stereotypes in our societies, the history, the ways how things and narratives are built, and how we should deconstruct these narratives with care. And here comes this wind, river, gentleness, I would say, and try really to negotiate. So this is my thinking of that. Because also among our societies, as you said, the unities can kill each other. I think what you're basically making a case for is the need for relationship. You know, that ultimately things change when people get to know each other, when they get to respect each other. At the moment, when people don't know each other, and the, on the basis of ignorance, they have these stereotypical impressions of each other, and so tensions kind of prevail, and it's as people are building relationships with each other and get to know each other as human beings, they may find out that they've got more things in common in a way as human beings, and even if they don't, they know each other well enough and respect each other well enough to kind of say, well, we respect that we have differences, but you know, it's not going to cause us to fight each other. Uh, but there's a challenge here that uh, I think a lot of the uh, cultural actors from the region face in their relationship with Europe, and you can com confirm or not, is that a lot of the festivals, let's say, in Europe uh, need to talk to audiences in Europe, so they need to access or the entry point to be through the familiar. And the familiar is a stereotype or a kind of a an easy access thing that, that doesn't make it so complex. And that's where 
I think Shubak did something else, so <laughs> it's, a, it's another uh, example of, of not falling into this. But many times it is, we all, fall, like we keep learning ourselves that sometimes we need this easy access, we need this frame, we need this bias in order to, to make it easier and faster. And then we get uh, surprised, oh, this person is not exactly how we, uh, we expected. But then the question is, is the communications in a festival context to the audiences? Because then you have a lot of work to do because we're already doing this kind of familiarity or uh, relationship building at the terms of the organizers. But then how to do it at the level of audiences? And here, I don't know how you're feeling about the changes in Europe and, and Balkans and the region with more towards like, let's not, like it's, we can even call it fascism. And with these shifts, it's, it's gonna be more important and more and more important this meeting of different uh, artistic, like artists from different parts of the region and the world to kind of pr provide a different point of view so that the, it questions this fascist uh, po worldview that makes these shortcuts like reduced in a way that almost a caricature of life. But they also have a point and we need to kind of also uh, a point of critique, like they have a, they're protesting something and this protest, we don't want to also dehumanize them. The question is how to understand this protest that they're raising in a way where we provide more relationship. Which I suppose takes us to another point I wanted to just pick up on for that would be of relevance to people here. And most of the folk here are not from Western Europe, um, but from you know, this particular region, um, from the Mediterranean, from the Balkans and the like. The question of aesthetics and how going to different places where the aesthetics might be different. So, I mean, my experience of Europe, say, coming as a playwright from South Africa, writing a play, but it being completely deconstructed by a Northern European director because ultimately in Northern Europe, it's the, it's the director that counts. So your play is just a source. And so what you thought you are articulating to an audience becomes something which is kind of, you know, deconstructed and it becomes something else. And so you see it on opening night and you think, where's my work? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and I think one needs to kind of understand that there are different contexts in which aesthetics play a different kind of role. If that play goes to my country, people may say, what is that about? But it kind of seems to work in their particular context because they have a different kind of aesthetic there that prevails. So I wanted to know, um, Ariel, from, from, from your kind of experience, is that something, uh, has, has your aesthetic practice shifted from engagement with different contexts or is it something that, yeah, talk to me a little bit about that. It wouldn't be shifting from one context to another, but from the beginning, we are questioning ourselves what would be the poetical discourse or the aesthetic that we could bring, that could we could build, that would reach the different uh, component of our society with all these difference of values. Of course, we would be aware of certain things that would be too frontal and that would be unproductive. And we are not here to, to provoke directly, but maybe to raise questions indirectly. For me, this is the, the place where we see our, our work as a collective. And some people could choose to have um, certain militantism through the arts. We believe that art is powerful enough to break some uh, frames and break some uh, mental constructions that are here that we should not place ourselves as uh, uh, peace building uh, activists or uh, uh, activists uh, to redefine uh, uh, values against patriarchy or whatever. We are here as artists 
and de facto, if we are working and listening, in fact, to the difference of, uh, of the components around us, we could find a way to build a specific path inside of these frames and indirectly a bit shake, in, shake the, 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 the things from within, in fact. So, an aesthetic of compromise. No, <laughs> at all, <laughs> at <laughs> all. <laughs> let uh, just be provocative. <laughs> no, no, be, no, I think what I wanted to ask. No, no, it's not, oh, no, no, let me, let me respond. <laughs> that, <laughs> ah, you're giving a joke. <laughs> so, no, because we, we, I've been born in this mess. So it's not that I'm compromising to find my place. I'm, my place is there, dealing with fascists all around or radicalism from all around. It's in my karma to, 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 to go and give a dance workshop in a place where women are not allowed to be anywhere. So, in fact, yes, I'm not here to teach the kids that uh, women should have, should, be, should have the same rights, but I'm here to give a dance workshop where inside the workshop I will be practicing, in fact, these values of equity, equality, diversity, and everything. But I leave it to the other to take it or leave it. Depends on how much they can, and allowed or uh, f or living in a dictatorship somehow. I really wasn't meaning compromise as a negative thing, because when we were talking about distribution of power earlier, that's about compromise. It's about it's about recognizing that you don't own truth or you don't own the ultimate, others might have truth. And so you arrive at something which is comp a compromise. Um, a negotiation is a compromise. It's not about imposing one set of values or the other. So that's how I kind of meant it rather than, but I did want to ask, considering that there are these different kinds of experiences, <laughs> um, do you not, um, maybe create a piece that is appropriate for one context but not for another as opposed to creating a piece that you think will work in all of these different contexts or you might take one particular piece and reshape it depending on the context into which you go no we re we never reshaped something depending on on where we go but it's a choice that we we did from the beginning not to remain in beirut and to address our work only to a specific cultural elite but uh, really to move and w we see a lot of artworks presented in beirut that we cannot program in hamana in 45 minutes out of the city because it's meant for a specific audience and it has n not been thought in a way to, to open up. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Christina, has your question arrived? <laughs> Please. Come and use this. You want to sit over? You might need to get up. about um, co-creating a vision with community. And I really like that idea. It's something that we try to um, be mindful of, not imposing um, our own vision of the festival, which in that case sometimes leads us. I don't think it's mm -hmm. great, but it's OK. Um, <coughs> it, 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 um, I don't think I'll see people yeah. in the festival. Yeah. So um, yeah, so essentially, how do we do this? If you have a, a, an example, like a lot of you mentioned, uh, social sciences can be a way. For us, we try to use more embodied and anthropological methods to understand the communities that we're going to work with before we work with them. Um, but if you have a specific uh, story or example, it would be good to know. Um. <coughs> Our example, thank you, Christina. The, our example, because we, uh, our positionality is different from an organization that based in a city. We are a regional organization that uh, provides support. We're an enabler. So we provide support to different, to the ecosystem 
so we support organizations and individuals. So our approach was since we had, like we were thinking of the question of um, uh, collectivity of the ecosystem of uh, building partnerships, building collaborations. So our approach was to do it together with the partners in one city, since it's a traveling festival. So let's say we travel to like Tanja, Tangier is an example. Uh, we don't do it ourselves, but it's not the audiences, it's the organizations that are partners in building the program. Uh, so, and then you, you learn about also the different audiences of, of different organizations. And what was, ex like what was um, a learning experience for us and for the organizations we partnered with is the, that the audiences do not ne necessarily mix. For example, uh, the Cinematheque has its own audiences and the theater uh, has their own, and the Think Tanger have their own uh, people. And then the festival allowed these uh, organizations, uh, or like let's, um, in the con some of them are not just organizations, but anyway, the, these uh, organizations to, to get to meet each other's audiences and to think at a city level. So that was new for, for all of us, like how to think at a city level when planning and across disciplines, because also disciplinary boundaries are very much something that we were trying to think beyond. Um, and what we did uh, is how also to make sure that the artists engaged in the, in the program had the chance to get to know each other better. Because usually also you go to a festival, the, the artist performs and leaves. Uh, there's less chance for the artists themselves to have conversations with like a musician with a visual artist or uh, especially from different parts of the Arab region because we're talking about an, a festival that brings together artists from across the Arab region which n not might not have met. Uh, so this was from our experience. From the experience of Ariana, they're working with the community so they know their community. It's, it's uh, a bit different. I don't know if there are other examples. I don't want to take the time if someone else has that kind of question. On that note, we shall end. No. But, <laughs> no, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, we really have come to the end of, of this. I mean, it's a discussion that we would love to be able to continue. It's just that we did promise people we'll finish by four o'clock. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of a break now. And um, I was wanting you to show your video, but it looks like electricity. No, no, no. It's OK. OK. Um, so folks, just on your behalf, say a huge thank you to the panel for their inputs. Yeah. And, and, uh,